when were they when were they there for you mm -hmm. every relationship you have there is some reason that you're endeared to that individual whether it's a spouse a significant other a parent a sibling even children or friends but if you think about when i was struggling when were they there you can immediately connect with wow you know that person was there for me you remember how you remember what it felt like for them to be there uh, so so that's a question that i think can immediately spur up gratefulness for an individual in your life uh, some other ones are as simple and silly as what's a word that makes me think of think of that individual and that can be Maybe it's, it's shopping. Maybe it's a, a certain drink they like. Maybe it's a, a food. Maybe they like to cook. But whatever that word is, it makes you connect with them and, and, and appreciate the little things about them that you, don't, you aren't able to take the time to slow down and think about sometimes. Thank you, thank you from my heart, from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. Stay connected to Gratitude. Hit the follow button right now and join thousands of listeners tuning in each week. We're the Gratitude Seekers. Come join us. Hi, Gratitude Seeker. Welcome to a new episode of the Gratitude Podcast. Today with me, I have an amazing person with an inspiring story. I, I love how uh, present and how uh, empathetic he is and just how he managed to, to bring from a difficult life situation something wonderful that he wants to share with you, with me, with the world, and um, to to actually help us be more appreciative of the people that we have in our life and uh, our our close people and the ones that we care about. I'm really happy to in, to introduce Connor James. He is, like I said. An amazing person he's doing some amazing work but i will let him tell you more about what he is about and what he is doing in this world yeah georgie and i'm i'm so grateful just to be here with you and your listeners and i think that uh, a lot of times in life we we hear maybe oh you know what if what if that person was erased or what if they were gone things would be differently and you mentioned the experience that i've gone through and we can talk about that a little bit later but what i'm passionate about and why i'm so grateful to be with your listeners and and for the work that you're doing is just bringing urgency to relationships and uh, helping people understand that it all can change in a moment in the snap of the fingers and you know, my company that I've founded is, is all about taking the time that we have and leveraging it to create more intentional moments and to create more meaning in those important relationships. So just grateful to be here today and uh, look forward to our conversation. Lovely. Lovely. So uh, let us know a little bit about your company as well. Yes, it's, it's called Meaningful Books. And sometimes people struggle to connect. Like I said, they, there's so many things going on. You know, a, a quote that I heard recently is, uh, we eat on the go, we sleep on the go, we're always on the go, and then we wonder where did our life go? <laughs> and um, my company, we've designed a proven process that's helps, helping people connect in their relationships, and we're helping them with written words. So like I said, we leverage the time. If you said, I'm going to 
allocate X amount of time, you sat down to do it. We're going to help that page fill itself with intentional words for an important person in your relationship. So if you sat down by yourself to do it, my strong argument and my commitment to you is that you're going to fill that page with, with much more meaning and intentionality than you were it would with the support of our writing guides because we ask you specific questions that help you connect with a moment in time or a future moment with uh, whether it be a significant other, a parent, a child, a sibling. So we've got these specific guides that help you fill a 15 page journal and, and really make those memories last forever. This is wonderful. And we will get into the power of as- asking intentional questions uh, in a bit, but firstly, let us know um, a little bit about your background and uh, the story that you, that you shared with me as well. I, I think yeah. it, it can be really inspiring for all of us. Absolutely. Yeah, when I, when I was a teenager, I was 13 years old, and, and life was pretty normal. I had two brothers, grew up in a small Midwestern town in the United States, in Illinois. And my dad was the sole income provider of our family. He took me to basketball practice early one morning. can still remember, you know, the, the coffee he was drinking. It was a cold winter morning. Got the basketball, he dropped me off, and that was that. I had a great practice, and following practice, somebody else picked me up. I was intending for him to pick me up. It didn't throw me off very much, but someone else picked me up, took me back to my house, and that's when I realized, you know, there were some other people, some family friends at our home, and um, it didn't. It didn't register yet. I went up to my room. My mother asked my brothers and I, my two brothers, to go up to our room. And uh, moments later, she took us downstairs. And and that's when I knew right away that something had happened. And she told my brothers and I, with my grandmother was sitting there, my my dad's mom, that my dad had had a massive heart attack and um, passed away. And so he was 46 Mm. years old. Oh, my God. And you just can't really shock and um, the emotions of that initial moment you can replay it in your mind and uh, I think that everybody handles things like that differently but when I say that there was truly no goodbyes there was um, no opportunity to to say anything there wasn't and uh, just like that our lives have changed forever and and now I'm trying to use that uh, in a positive way so what what did you feel then like i mean were there things that you would have loved for him to know or something like this yeah yeah absolutely i think um you don't think about some of those things later but even just how much he meant to me and um things that probably he didn't even know that i wish he would have known And yeah, that opportunity was, was stolen. It was taken away in, in, in a moment. And the emotion for me, I think I was just in shock. I I really, I was, I didn't cry right away. I I think it didn't seem real for a really long time uh, until you had that basketball game or you had that baseball game and and you looked up and just your mom was sitting there. That was, um, that was probably when over time you started to realize it. So. Yeah, I can imagine. I can imagine. Um, I think one important thing here is uh, that we can talk about is, for instance, for us guys, to um, it's not. It may be seen as something kind of cheesy to to let people know, especially when it's a guy guy thing, to let 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 them know about your feelings, about what you appreciate about that person, and I think that. This this is important to to change. It's important for us to to do that as well. Uh, f- from what I know, women usually do this uh, easier. Um, you usually, I mean, uh, when the relationship is okay. Um, but it's something that we can we can work on as well as guys, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think as men, we struggle a little bit more to to put those things out there, it's a little bit more natural to not want to do it. And, and Georgian, uh, we're at a time where men or women, 
Um, there's so many distractions now. There's not, there's not time to sit down and think about those things. We're not even giving ourselves the bandwidth or the margin to even focus on what we do appreciate about people in our lives. And, and that's, what's scary for me. And that's why I'm, again, I'm so grateful to be hopefully, you know, my, my biggest goal for listeners of this podcast or anybody that encounters anything I do is that I hope that they go home today, today, tonight, and they make that phone call or they put the phone in, in, in the drawer and they lock it up for the night and they sit down with their wife or their kid and, and they create more of those moments. That's really my, my uh, mission, I guess, if you will. Mm -hmm. So what does gratitude mean for you personally? How do you see gratitude? Yeah, I, I was a college football player here uh, in Southern Illinois. And so this may sound a little bit odd, but gratitude to me is, is going to practice every day. It's, it has to be a part of your, your makeup and, and your, your disciplined approach to life because you can't just wake up and say, this is what I'm grateful for. And I've learned this over time and I still have so much to learn, but gratitude to me means that you are intentional about focusing on what you appreciate, because if you don't, you won't be prepared for those moments later on. And you can't, you won't ever get to a state of, of full being really grateful. I totally agree. It's and it's something that we, if we do, uh, we we have it as a tool. We have it as a uh, something that keeps us going when things get harder. Because when when it's really easy to be grateful and when things are great, uh, it's important to be grateful then as well. But um, it's even more helpful when things aren't going that great to, to be able to have this uh, as, as a habit, as a, as a way of keeping it together somehow. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But um, what do you do when it's hard to be grateful? Like when it's really not the first thing that you, uh, that you think about when things are getting harder in life. Mm -hmm. well, I think you, you just said it you have to stay the course and you have to keep putting in the work. And for me, I, I have a daily gratitude practice of, of just three things from the previous day that I appreciate. And those can be the most simple things. And I think you get to that later. You're going to ask me about that. But when things are really hard, that's the time where you have to focus in on, um, I, on what, what is good, number one. And then number two, I think I, I ask people this question. I, I go around and I do speaking occasionally and I got a chance to be in front of a group a couple of weeks ago. And I said, you have to change, you have to change your perspective. And so ask yourself the question, does somebody else have it worse than me right now? And I think no matter what your circumstance is, there is somebody else out there that's going through something worse. And a lot of times we forget that we, we get in our own zone and in our own world. And so that question in and of itself, when things are really bad, and that may seem, you know, that's not saying I'm not sympathetic or empathetic to what someone's going through, but I'm just trying to help them um, re reset their mindset. I love this question. And I love the fact that, it gets you to feel grateful, but in a different way. Like you don't ask what are you grateful for. You you get to to see to one of the the most uh, useful things when um, coming to gratitude uh, is to uh, experience or to think about contrast. Like if you have any possibility of experiencing contrast. For instance, uh, if you go in a really poor neighborhood or country, you definitely appreciate the things that you have back at home in a totally different at a totally different level. But um, if you, yeah, no, I was going to say on that on that point. It, you know, it's like people exactly. You go on a, a mission trip or you experience something that it it 
sets your perspective again. It resets that perspective. Oh, wow, things are okay. But guess what, what happens, Georgian, over time? If you're out of that element, you drift back towards the comfort level and the, the level of things that could potentially lead you f- to forget why you should be grateful. Exactly, exactly. And it's, it just, it's just a way of our, our brain wants us to, um, to feel protected and to, to not worry about the things that are going great. And uh, it just puts them in the background. But it's our job to, to get them to the foreground and to appreciate them. Because if we don't, we only focus on, on those things that, um, that are possible threats that are um, taking our attention, that are important for survival, but that don't make us too happy. So yeah, this is this has been my experience, and in the research that I've done on gratitude, this this is what I what I found. But um, do you have like a favorite quote on gratitude? You know, it's um, again, it's it's a little bit more of a, a contrasting quote, I guess. But I, I think it's uh, we have three choices when things go bad. We can let those things destroy us define us or develop us and i can't remember who said that but that one sticks with me so every every time there's a circumstance of something that goes wrong for instance you know when my dad passed away i i could have let that i could still be clinging to that experience and saying i grew up from the time i was 13 without a dad uh just let me be grumpy um you know i'm mad at the world or I can take that experience and I, I could have let it destroy me too. I can take that experience and use it as something that's developed me and molded me into who I am today. Yeah, I love this because we all have bad experiences of some sort. And uh, of course, for ourselves, the uh, the worst ones are the ones that are closest to us and that we experience. But uh, in other ways, there have been other people that have experience, have had these kinds of experiences, and some of them found a way, like you said, to uh, to grow from them. Because one example that I, I love to give is, uh, for instance, Anthony Robbins or Oprah. Even they had really harsh experiences when when they were younger or in in their childhood and somehow they they found a way to to rise from that and to to develop to grow and to to actually have a positive impact in the world so it is actually a matter of choice even though it might not seem so when you are in that particular situation and all of those feelings come come to the surface right Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, I think there's story after story of individuals like that. And, and that's, that's what I'm always interested in, too, is, is I think uh, you mentioned people that are at the at the peak of the mountain, you know, and people that are so um, visible now, and they're helping thousands upon thousands of people. And what I'm interested in is you and I walk by people every single day and the listeners that are listening to this podcast, they do as well. And they probably are these people that are finding ways to overcome those moments right now. And so that, that's a little bit of what I do on my podcast is I take ordinary people and I say, how have you gotten through this? And they're not a superstar. They're not on cover of magazines, but I, I'm interested in their stories too. I love it. I love it. And um, let's get back to the the questions the power of questions i i love this and i think it can the questions can direct our focus and our actual experience of life i actually had uh, um uh, an episode recently about um beginning with the question why am i so unhappy and uh i really asked this question for quite a while for years and uh not this exact question, but uh, questions that were related to this. And I found many answers, many reasons, many... uh, I could understand, for instance, from an emotional 
uh, intelligence perspective, from an ast astrological perspective, from a spiritual perspective. So all kinds of perspectives. And I did learn a lot from this. But um, if we only ask better questions like, what can I do to be happy? Um, what makes me happy and I didn't do for, for a while or something like this, it actually shifts your perspective and it gets you to feel that, to experience that instead of just understanding why is this happening to me or why is this happening? So I really believe in the, the power of questions and I would love to, to hear your perspective. Absolutely. I have two thoughts. Well, the first one is, is the world happening to me or am I happening to the world? And, and that the, the questions and the narrative that you play in your mind that you build into your daily life can uh, direct that those circumstances for my wife and I, uh, it could be really easy for her to come home and for me to say, Oh, how was your day today? And I think naturally we are designed to maybe talk about or reflect on things that didn't go well or that were hard or challenges but instead of saying, how did your get day go? What, what we say in, in our house is um, two questions. What went well today? And what did you learn? Mm -hmm. And so you see how you can't answer. <laughs> that, that's already framing the conversation for a positive conversation. And it prevents us from having a 30-minute. Now, if there are times where there was something that was absolutely horrible, yeah, you, you have to dive into that and be there in comfort. But so just those two questions in a daily, you know, repetitive setting change the conversation that we're having dramatically. Um, I know. Those are just two. And then if you want me to continue on, go, do you have thoughts de on de that? Definitely, definitely. Uh, so if you have other questions, I, I would really appreciate it if you, if you would share them. But uh, firstly, I would like to get, get into the first question that you mentioned. And I think this is, this is a really good one. The one with uh, uh, whether the world is happening to you or... So I think this, this is a really good one because it actually reminds us that we are we have the power somehow, right? Mm -hmm. We have a choice, you know, uh, we have a choice and, and we, we have a lot more control sometimes than we, than we give ourselves credit for. Now there are absolutely situations where, uh, you don't necessarily have immediate control, but you have control on, on the, on the narrative and how you think about that situation. I, I think this is really good. And especially since we, um for instance in in my situation where when i was growing up i i thought that this is the world and i thought of the world as something fixed like this is how it is and i have to adapt to it and um i think this brings a really good shift in 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 perspective in in the fact that we actually are co-creators of this world and we can influence this world in a positive way so we can create new things that weren't there before and uh, people that will come after us will see them and will think that this is the world and that they can also improve on it and i think this is this is important as as a shift in perspective but let's let's get into into the other questions that you that you wanted to mention well it's a, it's more of a framework to ask better questions uh the meaningful books process we every single page ask a question that helps somebody connect with the memory an example of that is let's go back when did we first meet and just it immediately helps someone think about that moment because they don't take the time to do it but the framework in general Generally speaking, a lot of time we just spend time asking questions about the present day or what happened in the moment. But if you'll take a minute and you'll reframe the conversation to think about look back in the past or look towards the future, we, we oftentimes forget those two directions. There's so much positive either way or there's so much excitement potentially about things in the future. And so a question as simple as, what have you been dreaming about lately? You know, what, what, uh, what do you dream about? 
that's towards the future. What are you excited about in the future? And that's towards the future, but that, that, that changes the mindset a little bit of just the every day. This is what we're in right now. And shifts the perspective. And then looking back, what was the, what was one of the most favorite, I don't know, meals we had together or something, anything in the past that you can connect with that on in a positive way it is something I found to be very helpful. This is really good. And it's, it's a great tool. I was thinking that it's, it's a great tool for, for gratitude as well, because we can, uh, we can ask what I'm, what am I grateful for, but we can also go more in depth and we can have more, imagination and creativity when when it comes to ans- uh, asking questions that lead to gratitude so do you have any ideas on on these kinds of questions that we can ask that lead to gratitude i think so i think this one is contrasting but uh, by my side is is a is a prompt from one of the writing guides and it's when were they when were they there for you Mm -hmm. every relationship you have there is some reason that you're endeared to that individual whether it's a spouse a significant other a parent a sibling even children or friends but if you think about when i was struggling when were they there you can immediately connect with wow you know that person was there for me you remember how you remember what it felt like for them to be there Uh, so so that's a question that i think can immediately spur up gratefulness for an individual in your life. Uh, some other ones are as simple and silly as what's a word that makes me think of, think of that individual. And that can be, maybe it's, it's shopping. Maybe it's a, a certain drink they like, maybe it's a, a food, maybe they like to cook, but whatever that word is, it makes you connect with them and, and, and appreciate the little things about them that you don't, you aren't able to take the time to slow down and think about sometimes. I love, I love how this simplifies things. Like, um, of course, when you were asking the question, I was thinking about people in my life Mm -hmm. and, uh, it's really interesting how, how easy it is to bring positive feelings, to bring feelings of uh, appreciation of, uh, like remembering, positive experiences that you had together it's this is really good and i think that we can uh we can go into more depth on this or we can find other kinds of questions that are related to this that will lead to to gratitude and to to feeling appreciation for for the people in our life and also for our experiences yeah i think i think this is really good so yeah yeah I, I, i'm glad it's that's the hardest thing to think about is I sit down and that's the deep work for me is what's a question that would on a broad spectrum, help anybody connect and appreciate. And um, when they sat down to think about it, they would immediately be able to connect with that individual more. So, yeah, I love it. Usually when, when things are simple like this, um, it means that someone actually put in the work to to simplify things and when when something is simple it means that some someone really uh, made it simple from something that might have been complicated and that this is this is mastery uh, from my point of view so um what do you do on a constant basis to to continue to be grateful and to to experience this attitude of gratitude Absolutely. I I mentioned one earlier. It's just the three things every single day. Our brains are designed from a primal state uh, to look for fear. So if you, you know, went back to a a caveman or people in their early years, they hear a twig snap and they're always on alert. And so if we don't train ourselves to look for the positive every single day, we're not going to start doing that. And so every day I sit down uh, some point early in the morning, and I'll write down just three things that were a positive from the previous day. Now, Georgie, and, and to the listeners, that could be as simple as I was grateful that internet worked, that I had internet. I am grateful for a car that got me to point A to point B, clean water, um, 
or I was grateful that my wife made dinner. You know, it's, it could be super simple, but just three of those things and it's practice and I do the work. That would be one practice that helps me. Another one that I learned from a book called Before Happiness by Sean Acor, positive psychologist, is meaning markers. So as you're moving forward in life, it's easy to forget what you're working towards or, or why you're working forward. And he says, write down what gives your life meaning and look at it. And so on my whiteboard here in my office, I have, I have about 10 to 12 things listed out that, that give my life meaning. And whether that be family, whether that be having a positive impact, whether that be using the story of losing my dad to help somebody else go create a moment in, in their family. So th those things give me meaning and help me um, develop that attitude of gratitude, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. And um, you mentioned uh, creating moments. How, how do we do this? Well, I think the first thing is you have to, you have to have time. You have to have time to do it. And the really convicting thing for people um, is to look at your schedule. So I could ask you, what type of impact do you want to have on people? Or when you're uh, at the end of your life, what will you want people to have said about you? And a lot of positive things will come out. But then if I ask you, show me your schedule, where are you doing those things? Where are you making sure those things, you're investing in those things right now? And look, I'm as guilty as anybody for this. You know, this is an opportunity to hopefully invest in people. But a lot of times you look at the schedule and it doesn't line up with what you want in the future. And that's okay because a lot of us are in that boat. But to do that, we have to be intentional. We have to give it a little bit of thought and, and think about it. And an example that's coming to mind is um, it took me five minutes to think about this and to put it on my schedule, but the impact was so much greater. So my wife and I, we had a first date at a local restaurant. And uh, several months ago, it was seven year anniversary of that date. So number one, I wrote down the date of the first date we went on. Number two, I scheduled it on our calendar. Hey, here's where we're going to go on this night. And even if she knew it, when we went there, it was all reflecting about, you remember when we met here, you know, X amount of years ago and all the things that have changed. We could have went there without knowing that it was that night and it would have changed the perspective it would have been a regular night. But because I spent the five minutes to say, Hey, this is going to help us uh, reconnect with that date, that first original date night, it really helped. So all I'm saying is that it took five minutes to think of it, put it on the calendar. So being intentional with that moment and really creating it is how I think you can do that. Architecting those moments. This is, this is really good because this actually gives us reasons and uh, ideas on what like, we can be grateful for because if we are creating those, those moments, we can definitely go back to them and use them as fuel to go, to go forward and to, to enjoy life more and to appreciate it more. So you mentioned your wife. Uh, who are the people in your life that you are grateful for? Oh, wow. Absolutely her. I, I wouldn't be uh, the man I am without her. Um, you know, she's such a strong woman and she encouraged me in everything I do. And, and really all the things that I've worked on wouldn't be possible without her support. So the other one would be my mom, just having watched her go through what she went through and losing her husband and then raising myself and my two brothers and uh, just the huge heart that she has and my two brothers and so many more people, so many friends and family members and people that go to my church and um, just so grateful for so many people in my life that support me, encourage me. And I think a lot of times you can feel like you're, you're isolated by yourself, but you're really not. And when you take the opportunity just to ask the simple question, like you did, I'm so loved and I'm so grateful for all those people. They make up, uh, you know, it's like a mosaic. They, they make up uh, who I am as one. 
but uh, so many of them. So just grateful for all of them. I'm so grateful for your time, you know, just your time and the listeners. And again, I just really want them to go from this conversation and make that phone call, say, I'm sorry to that person you have that grudge against and just, just uh, invest in relationships because they can all change really quickly. Lovely. I love the message. And I think it's the best way to, to, to end this interview. Thank you so much for being here with us and for sharing so much of what you are with us. Thank you so much, George, and thank you to you and the, the Gratitude podcast listeners. Hey, Gratitude Seeker. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this interview. I really appreciate it. And if you could think of one person that would also benefit from it, share it with them. It might actually be the inspiration that they need to make their day or maybe even their life much better. Thank you so much once again. This has been Georgian Benta. Don't forget to keep seeking and spreading gratitude.